I'm a self-taught 3D artist and I've been using Blender for the past decade. Although I have some experience, I've never tried to make a full 3D character from scratch before this. To make this video, I had to get really good at human anatomy, digital sculpting in Blender and all the techniques I've learned doing 3D all these years. The goal of this video was to attack my weaknesses and to make a comprehensive guide for anyone learning to make characters in Blender. This is Blue Inversion and let's get started. So I'll start with the sphere and I'll pull out the basic shapes of the head with the grab brush. Shift A to mask out the neck. Mark the area in the middle of the head for the ear. Pull it out. Slightly hint at the cheekbone, the temples of the head. Use the inflate brush to make the eye sockets. Pull out the nose with the grab brush. Make the marks for the forehead. Go ahead with secondary details to the ear, the cheekbone and use the pinch brush to separate the two lips. Once you're done with the chin, add some temporary lines for the eyes and use the inflate brush to add some volume. Grab it and put it backwards into the eye socket. I'm adding a fake temporary eyeball for now and using the clay strips brush to add some volume around the eye. Using the draw sharp brush, I'm making the upper eyelid. Smooth out the lower eyelid holding down shift. Mask the fold above the eye and pull down the upper eyelid and add some more details. I'll make a temporary iris. Make the nostrils and use the scrape brush to make the planes of the nose. I'll narrow out the jaw because this is a stylized head. Add the characteristic M shape to the upper lip. Turn on snapping to faces and use a plane, extrude it and add a solidify modifier to make the eyebrows. Same thing for the eyelashes. Mask out the upper lid and add some volume above it. That's very important for the relaxed look. Duplicate the head now and add it into an area of 8 heads for measurement. I'm using separate meshes in sculpt mode to form the basic structure of the body. Once you're happy with the proportions, join and remesh the objects together. The head and neck can stay a separate object because the shirt collar will hide the scene. Although the back won't be visible, I like keeping some basic landmarks there. Finally, add the bony landmarks of the arms and make a proxy for the hand. Use the lasso mask to define the suit on the body. Extract the mask into a new object and you can use quadrimesure to retopologize it. It is paid and I really like it. It's not sponsored, so you can use anything else if you want. In edit mode, I'm using proportional editing to finish the suit. A subdivided cylinder for the skirt with a shrink wrap modifier to wrap it around the body. Similar to the suit, use the masking technique to extract the shirt. Then finish off the collar and to fix the topology, I'll be using the knife tool and add an extra loop there. Mask extract the socks. Now I'll be making the shoes. I have a tutorial on sneakers in my channel. I have two of them I think, so I'm not going to explain this in too much detail. But it is a simple shoe, so it shouldn't take too much of your time. Go ahead and finish the skirt now and then move on to the ties. The tie was a little bit time consuming to model but I think the clean topology in the end was worth it. Now for the hair, I'll be using a hair card asset. It is common practice to use hair cards for real time characters partly because they're lightweight and they're easy on the CPU. I'll add some slight indication of colors and textures. Now with an iris map, I will make an eye texture and unwrap the eyeball onto it. I'll push the eyeball upwards to again give that relaxed look. Here again I'm using the mask extract method for the scalp and I'll project it onto the hair card's texture and make a quick scalp out of it. Now the name of the game is using the hair cards and stacking them on top of the scalp. This way we can have some good hair from the hair cards and any gaps will be filled by the scalp shader. I'm using EV to render this out so I have to make sure that under the material properties the blending mode is set to alpha hashed. Otherwise semi-transparent objects like the hair cards will not look right. At this point in the video, I decided to make a ribbon for the hair using the Bezier curve object. Females have a relatively higher hairline than males, so making that change instantly improved my render. I'm using the hair cards and with the curve modifier wrapping them around a circle. I'm using another curve modifier and wrapping it around a Bezier curve and that way I can control the shape of it. I'll use this as the ponytail or whatever you call them, I'm not a hairstylist. The final step to the hair would be to add some braids. It is very well documented on how to do this in Blender. You can find lots of tutorials on YouTube. So if I imagine that the braid is made up of three twisted parts, I'm making one part and then using an area modifier for the rest, converting it to curve and adding some depth to it. Now it looks like a braid. Add another path object to control the shape of it and now position it on the head. You can go into edit mode, select one point in the curve and use Alt S to scale down the braid. Unwrap the braids and have some hair texture on them as well. I was confused earlier whether to have a blonde or not. So I returned to the shaders page and tried to decide something. But as you can see, I ended up with a mix of something in between. I finally made the eyes reflective and added an environment texture so that it has something to reflect. 
Nazan Oshenko is a great character artist and he has an eyelash pack on Blender Market, so I got them. The eyelash here is actually hand modeled and then it is wrapped around the eye using a curve, much like we used to make the ponytail or the braid. It's a similar concept and a huge time saver in this case. This is going to be the only footage I'm allowing to stay on this video where I'm failing miserably to make a good hand. So I decided I needed some help. So I got these from one of the 3D assets shops, really great hands. Don't judge me, I was already short on time. And yeah, it still took some time to match the skin color with the rest of the body. The topology of the face we have sculpted is really bad. This is natural after sculpting, but now you need to retopologize it like I'm doing it on screen. This is because if you want to animate the face or if you want to add textures or do pretty much anything after the modeling process, you need a all quad geometry. And these quads need to be distributed in loops around the eyes, mouth, nose, and the ear. If you follow this basic template for face retopology, then it becomes really easy, but it sure is time consuming. It took me like a few hours to do this. I even added what we call the mouth bag inside the main head in case your model needs to open the mouth. If you want to speed up the retopology, then you can use the F2 add-on that comes by default in Blender. I've used it here. It helps you speed up the quad creation process. Now it's time for texturing. I'm marking the seams for the face and once it is unwrapped, I can use the grab brush in the UV editor and relax the projection to match the texture. I'm in the edit mode now and it's time to add some more details to the skirt. I'm scaling out every alternate edge and rotating it along the Z axis. Then you have to manually add some crease, move around some vertices so that it looks good. Then add some few edge loops to make the top of the skirt. Add the multi-res modifier to the suit and you can start sculpting. Quick subdivide whenever you want to go up in detail. I'm stabilizing the stroke here so that you get smooth lines. Do this for the entire lining of the suit. This will be helpful when we bake the ambient occlusion map in Substance Painter. I will build the buttons by extruding out circles and keeping it pretty simple actually. We will repeat the same thing for the shirt underneath. Add some more subdivisions from the multi res modifier. Same for the sleeves. We will indicate the stitching here with the stabilized stroke method. I'm adding bigger folds to the sleeve so that it does not look like it's sticking to the arm. In a similar way, we will finish the skirt by adding some folds, creases, stuff like that. Trying your best to make it look as natural as possible. To get rid of that clean, rigid look that comes with 3D modeling. Once you're done with sculpting the details in, now it's time to import the model into Substance Painter. But before that, one more step, you need to make sure everything is properly UV unwrapped in Blender. Before we begin, bake all of the texture maps in Substance Painter. Now most of the shaders that I'm using here are included in the starter pack for Substance Painter. So you don't need to go out and pour lots of money into getting shaders. The best thing about Substance Painter is that you already have so many shaders in the starter pack and so many textures and generators. It's very rare you have to build something from scratch. Since I've built the eyelashes separately, I do not need them in the texture. So I'm using the clone brush to remove them. Also, the seam near the ear was easily painted out. Now I'll add some eye makeup. It goes a long way to make your model much more appealing, especially if it's a stylized character. When I was coming up with the concept for this, I had lipstick in mind, but it didn't really turn out that well, so I decided to leave the color natural. And make sure you add the freckles. You gotta add it. If you're making a female character, you gotta add freckles. Now we are back in Blender. We are importing all the textures from Substance Painter. I'm using the color ramp here to adjust the roughness map. Don't fully trust whatever comes out of Substance Painter because sometimes it needs some tweaking. In my experience, the roughness map needed uh, adjusting for most of the shaders, so I would look into that. I'm adding subsurface scattering to the face and everywhere there's skin so that the light penetrates through it. I'm particularly happy with how the shoe turned out. The minor bumps and scratches are looking really nice. So now we're done with the shaders. It's looking quite nice, but I will take it a step further with compositing. I will add a glare node. Now lens distortion some very minimum amount of blur because most cameras in real life are not so sharp. The hand has returned to bite me. I checked and the skin colors were not matching. So a little bit of work on that and we are done. So this is how the final render looks. I'm pretty happy with the result. Let me know what you think. This is Blue Inversion and thank you for watching.